This modern world of science and invention is of particular interest to women, for the lives of women have been more affected by its new horizons than those of any other group. After the Equal Rights Movement, women have been looked upon differently. Amelia Earhart was one of the women that helped to create the Equal Rights Movement. Amelia Earhart was a great role model for women and girls all over the world. By flying, she did a man's job, which helped to show that no matter what men said about women, they could still do what they want. At the time that she flew, there was a barrier separating men's jobs and women's jobs. Women couldn't do lots of the jobs that men could, and Amelia helped to break this barrier by doing a man's job. Because of Amelia Earhart, women saw that they didn't have to sit at home. They started doing men's jobs, proving that they could do things just as good or better than men. On May 16, 1923, Amelia Earhart became the 16th woman in the U.S. to get a pilot's license. As such, this itself was an achievement. Amelia was by no means a great flyer, but she was passionate and persistent with her flying. The fact that she broke so many records made her seem like a great flyer. Some even said she's the best female pilot, and others said the best pilot of all. During her flying career, she set records for speed, distance, and altitude. Along with being the first female pilot to cross the Atlantic, Amelia had lots of different jobs, including being a nurse's aide, teaching English, and working at Purdue University to teach women about careers. During her flying career, Amelia received many awards, including the National Geographic Society Gold Medal, and Congress awarded her the Distinguished Flying Cross. Along with this, she was elected as an official for the National Aeronautic Association. She wrote many books as well, such as 20 Hours, 40 Minutes, The Fun of It, and because her deadly flight was going to be her last flight either way, a book called Last Flight was another one she wrote. Although she did these things in her adult life, she did plenty more in her childhood. Amelia Mary Earhart was born on July 24, 1897 in Atchison, Kansas, and had a younger sister named Grace Merrill Earhart. Her dad was a lawyer but had trouble holding a job, so the family moved around a lot. At one time, her dad couldn't find a job for quite some time, which caused him to become alcoholic, and though it was not common at the time, it led to a divorce. Her grandfather, Alfred Otis, was a retired U.S. District Court judge and the president of Atchison Savings Bank. He thought of himself as high class and was not a fan of Amelia's tomboyish actions. Though her mother let her wear pants and shirts, she wasn't a fan of short hair and would only let Amelia get cut as short as shoulder length. Amelia fixed this problem as an adult by getting her hair cut short and hiding it under a hat so her mom thought her hair was still long. Her entire family, except for her mom, were not fans of the way she acted, but were proud of her achievements later in life. Amelia had studied in medical school, and in 1915, she worked as a nurse's aide, helping soldiers return from the war. When Amelia got time off, she would watch shield pilots fly around the yard. Initially, she just thought of planes as pieces of metal. Then, when she saw them flying, she knew they were more than just that. When the Spanish flu came, Amelia caught it, and when she healed, she accepted Grace's invitation to return home. Her parents had just recently got back together, and this would be the first time in years that the whole family would be together. After she got home on December 25, 1920, her dad took her to see an air show. During this show, a pilot asked if she would like a ride on his airplane. When she answered yes, she took a ride that transformed her life. She knew that she was not meant to be in medical school, but that she was meant to fly. Afterwards, she asked her dad if he would ask the pilots a few questions. Among these questions were how much does it cost for flying lessons and how long does it take to fly. When she got home that day, she told her dad that she wanted to fly. Her dad laughed at her, but she was dead serious, and he soon gave in. He looked into flying lessons for Amelia, but he hated the idea of her being in the sky without him, though what he hated more was for being in the sky with a boy. Because at the time, there weren't many female pilots, but eventually he did find one. On January 3, 1921, she had her first flying lesson with Mary Anita Snook, who went by the name Nita Snook. Nita was the first woman to own an aviation business, and it cost Amelia $1 per minute. In all, it took her 15 hours and 47 minutes to learn to fly, so her cost was $15.50. She got her pilot's license in December of that year, and in October 1922, she broke her first record, an altitude record of 14,000 feet. Over the course of her flying, Amelia and Nita became good friends, and Nita no longer looked at Amelia as a student, but as a peer. In 1929, Amelia was featured in the first ever women's air derby. This was called the Powder Puff Derby. Although 70 women now had pilot's license, only 40 met the qualifications to participate in 19 to the race. To participate, you must have 100 hours of flying solo and 25 hours of flying solo across the country.
The Derby began in St. Monica, California, and was ended in Cleveland, Ohio. Out of the 19 participants, only 15 made to the end. Amelia came in third, but due to carbon monoxide poisoning, Marvel Crossan actually died in the race. In 1931, Amelia was planning to cross the Atlantic Ocean. She was to cross with pilot Bill Stoltz and co-pilot and mechanic Slim Gordon. During the planning of this flight, Amelia was engaged to Samuel Chapman, but then met her future husband, George Putman, and blew off the engagement. It took her 20 hours and 40 minutes to do this flight, leading to her book, 20 hours, 40 minutes. Amelia had hoped to do at least some of the flight in this flight, but was unable to due to the weather. When she landed, the world looked not at the pilot, but the first woman to cross the Atlantic. I was nothing but a sack of potatoes, she said, but still the attention was all on her. When she got back home, George proposed to her five times. On his sixth time proposing, she finally accepted. The day before their marriage, she got cold feet. Marriage was nothing but a case to her, which led her to write the note to him that said she was not bound to him forever, and if it didn't work out with them within a year, she was leaving. After their marriage, Amelia did other flights, such as being the first woman to cross the Atlantic solo and a flight to advertise hotels in Honolulu. Among all the marvels of modern invention, that with which I am most concerned is, of course, air transportation. Flying is perhaps the most dramatic of recent scientific attainments. In the brief span of 30 odd years, the world has seen an inventor's dream, first materialized by the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, become an everyday actuality. Amelia Earhart was coming to the end of her career and she wanted to do something big. She decided to do an around the world flight. Charles Lindbergh had done a flight just like this, but hers would be farther and she'd be the first one to do this. After lots of planning, her flight was ready to go. She used to fly from south to north, but after a crash in Honolulu, she decided to fly from east to west. During her flight, she crashed again and needed to take her plane for repair. She had to send home extra things that were not needed. These things include a parachute, a first aid kit, and a little bit of extra food. On July 2, 1937, close to her last stop of the flight, she lost connection with the Coast Guard. But after a while, she got it back. Connection started to come in and out. Her last message was, we are on line 157-337. We will repeat this message. We will repeat this on 62 Karen Kill Psychos. Wait. After this, smoke was seen in the sky. She crashed and was never seen again. Though many people may only think of Amelia Earhart as a pilot, she stood for so much more. She stood for women's careers, for being yourself, and not to be afraid if it was new, to go above and beyond, to follow your dreams, and to care not what other people think, but what you think, what you like, and how you do it. If it hadn't been for her, women might not have the freedom they have today. Amelia Earhart proved to show that no matter who you are, where you come from, or what you do, you can do anything. This is what Amelia Earhart 